Hello, it's Sarah from Funky Fossil here. Uh, thank you very much for joining me on my YouTube channel. And uh, I hope you enjoy the videos and techniques that I share on here with you. Um, before I get started, it'd be great if you could um, subscribe to the channel. It's very new, so it'd be great to kind of get as many of you uh, watching on a regular basis as, as possible. And of course, if you enjoy the video, um, please do like and share. So what I was going to do today is really fun and easy stamping technique, which is made easy um, by the, the kind of the Purdy Winks stamper ring kind of stencil tool. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm probably very late to the stamper ring party. Many, many of you may already have this or be very familiar with it. But it's quite new to me and I've been really impressed by some of the, the designs that it helps me to create on a card front because the way it helps me place my stamped images. So I wanted to show you a little bit about how I've created some designs using um, newly released uh, Beauty's Garden stamp set. I think the kind of stylized florals on here will make some really interesting kind of mandala uh, looking designs. And I want to test that out on camera with you. So I'll put the link in the description box below uh, in terms of um, where you can get the stamper ring and also Pearly Winks have their own YouTube channel with lots of great instruction and demos as to how to get the most out of this kind of tool. So I'm, very, I'm definitely new to it and I'm sure they've got lots of other great ideas that they can, um, they can introduce you to. And the, the stencil kind of uh, pack comes with a number of parts to it. Um, some, some further shapes and masks that you can use to, to kind of um, work on your designs. And there's this also this main stencil um, plate, this kind of large square stencil with this notch circle, as you can see in the middle here. Uh, and this has 16 notches on it. So it enables you to turn your card repeatedly around this circle and create kind of perfect um, circles, wreaths, mandala type designs. It also comes with some smaller um, versions of that circle. So you could uh, you can put them inside the main plate and work with smaller pieces of card depending on the design you're you're working with so it gives you lots of options i'm going to work with the main the main kind of plate on these these designs uh, but i just wanted to show you what came in the pack so in order to get your placement right obviously you put your your um your stencil into a stamping platform and I'm using the Eureka by Stamps by Me because it's a nice size of platform. I've got plenty of working space. And then you need a square of a card. Could be any color card. I'm using white for my designs. And I think it needs to be cut to four inches. I think I cut mine around 12.6 centimeters. And as you can see, you want it so that the card um, sits neatly into the notches. On your um, on your stencil, so that will give you the placement um, as we go around with the stamp. So when I was thinking about the first design I might make with the stamper ring, I thought I'd use this floral, which is quite a quite a kind of. Um, it's not geometric, but kind of a geometric -y look because it's got that straight stem. So I'm placing it at effectively my starting point on the, the card front. I'm just eyeballing it. Um, you could uh, look at uh, measuring where the actual centre point of the white card is and, and working your design out from there. But I'm just going to eyeball it and hope that that works for me. So I'm going to pick the stamp up in my platform and just... Make sure that the card didn't move too much there. And then we're going to ink it up and get going and see what we can create. So I'm going to use um, Versifying Claire for the stamping. This is a warm breeze, a lovely teal colour. I do like my Claire's for um, the stamping because I think they come in a fabulous set of really vibrant colours. But they're also nice juicy inks which give you, I think, a really crisp impression. When you're stamping so we've got our first impression here of course the joy of um, the platform would be if i'd missed anything i could have gone back in now as i said at the beginning you could go around this uh, circle 16 times 
but I think given the size of my image, the overlap from one to another notch would be, um, would be a bit too much. So I'm going to try moving it every two notches and see what that does for me as a design. It's, um, if you had a much smaller image, you could go around 16 times and you'd create a lovely, lovely circular, circular pattern. Same again. So I've not had to move my stamp. I'm just moving the cardstock. Same colour. And pressing down. And you can see this overlap there between the two images, but it would have been even more if I'd, if I'd um, just gone for the one the one notch set round we go again two notches at a time and another two notches my spatial awareness is shockingly bad so having something like this just to help me line things up and keep count <laughs> keep count of where I'm at is really useful it's one of these things which is really simple in practice and you you wonder why you hadn't thought of it yourself but you're just really glad somebody has thought of it so let's go with another two put my magnet down and a bit more ink And I'm just doing this one all in the same colour just to keep the stamping quick and easy. But you can start to imagine all the various effects that you can get using different colours, using different images. It just gives everything in your kind of craft stash or your stamp stash a new lease of life. So here we go. And one of the things I would say when you're stamping out these um, these kind of overlapping images is keep going go right the way around to the end because sometimes when you get when you when you're overlapping you think that's that's just looking like a bit of a mess but it's that's where sometimes the magic happens in that the overlaps create further patterns that you wouldn't have anticipated or necessarily been able to create yourself so you know let that overlapping repeat unfold and see what you get and if you really don't like it then of course you can turn it over and use the other side piece of card this is the final one of our eight impressions Let's see how that looks so i think that's really effective because you can see there just that just that single color but you've got that almost that kind of further floral has formed in the middle where the images have overlapped you could color segments of it and highlight different pieces and, and bring them forward so it really does become a, a mandala in its own right so i think as a first stamp around that looks pretty good right let's see whether we can get different effects using more than one color right now that we've seen the kind of the basic principle of how the stampering works i'm keen to see uh, what different effects i can get using more than one color in in my kind of circular stamping i'm going to use a different image from the beauty's garden set which is a kind of a, a floral again but it's got a slightly more um kind of fluid line more of a curvy line so it'll be interesting to see how that looks different to maybe the slightly more geometric uh, shapes that we used in the first card. I'm going to go with two different colours as, as I said um, and I'm going to go with two different greens. So we've got Shady Lane and we've got Golden Meadow from Versifying Claire. So a dark and a light green which hopefully will work well together. Exactly as I showed you last time I've already got my stamp in position uh, and I've got it right up to the very edge of the card because I think this is a slightly longer stamp um, so it may not completely fit on the card when I'm turning it um, but as you can tell I'm, I'm really kind of judging it by eye rather than um, 
by doing any measuring. So same process as we went through last time. I'm going with my shady lane, the darker green. Get that down. And what I'm going to do, rather than kind of alternating the colours as I stamp, I'm just going to turn the card four notches this time um, so that I only stamp four of these flowers and then I'll go back in and stamp another four with a lighter colour. You could, of course, um, do it as you go and uh, wipe off the stamp each time as you alternate the colours, but I thought this might be just a slightly easier way of doing it. So I've got one, two, three, four, four notches. It really is up to you how many times or how many repeats of the image you use around the ring. So there we go, we'll go with another four. And hopefully you can just see how easy this is. It's really quite mindful. Once you get into the flow, you're just inking and stamping. The, the kind of positioning ring is doing a lot of the work for you. I'm typically just kind of holding the lid before I, I let it make contact with the paper, just, just as a way of stopping myself if I have kind of overshot with my with the notches and I've got the stamp in the wrong place. Well, that's our first four. So I can wipe off the stamp and we can apply the, the lighter colour, the um, Golden Meadow. And what I'll do, so the stamp hasn't moved position on the platform, what I'll do is move the card two notches. And that should give me a position, starting position for this colour between the, the um, flowers I've already got down. I'll just check that. That looks okay to me. So off we go again with Golden Meadow. And so this needs four movements, four notches. There we go. I just think being able to place images like this just almost gives gives things a kind of um, almost kind of a printed look because you've got that uniformity in your positioning. I'm liking these colours too. I'm thinking it's looking a bit, a bit William Morris, isn't it? I think with this kind of stylized floral. Have I got that right? It feels like it should be there. Let me. Let me check. Yeah, I think it should be there. Serves me right for chatting away. Yeah. So there we go. And then the last one to go down to complete this circle is another four. Oops, got that right. Oh, I'm all over the shop now. Let's have a look. Yeah, that looks right. The last one. To create, it's almost like a bit of a pinwheel, this one, in the way it looks. Again, completely different effect to our first one in that we've got that difference in tone with the two colours that we've used and you see you've got that kind of almost circular overlap where all the stems have touched in the middle um, so yeah got a bit of a William Morris vibe on that one but two very different looks done in a very simple way I think for the third one let's go all out and uh, use the whole rainbow on our card front so here I am all set up with my third card panel 
in situ on the uh, stamper ring as I've shown you before. I've already got my uh, stamp image um, in its starting place on the uh, stamp platform lid and I'm going to use this beautiful moth design from Beauty's Garden. I'm just going to get going and um, repeatedly stamp the moth out in all the kind of colours of the rainbow so to create a very different almost kind of modern look to this card. And this one as well, I'll do uh, every two notches like I've done with the other ones, because again, in terms of overlap, I don't want the image to get completely lost um, if it's if it's um, each each of the moths is too close to each other. I'm going to go this way because I want my rainbow to go kind of clockwise around the around the card front. No, I'm not going to clean the stamp off because I'm going with colours kind of one after the other that are going to work nicely. So if there's any blend on the stamp, it won't harm the effect. A nice vibrant orange. And on we go. So I'm sure you've got the idea by now of exactly how these things build up. So if you want to speed me up, please do. Going in with the yellow now. Just the different, just as, as simple as the different colours that you use, giving you a completely different feel to the design you end up with. That's the joy of it, isn't it? That's why we love stamping. One stamp can look so different in different contexts. I think this particular this beauty's garden set, you know, you, you could create a kind of really, really elegant and really vintage looks with it. But here, obviously, I'm going with bright modern colours. And it's looking good. Let's so go a slightly darker green to follow up on that yellowy green. And how quickly? Is this coming together? And I say you could leave this stamp in place where it is now and just keep going with different um, card panels one after the other. So, what do we need now? We'll go with the blue, the lightish blue. There's a nice amount of overlap between these moths as well. Just that wing. Two more. Stronger blue. So my main challenge with something like this is not the technique, it's just trying to get a card made without random inky marks that I seem to be able to leave on everything I stamp. Let's see. Is that right? Yep. So finally, in our rainbow, let's go with some purple to complete the circle. And how cool does that look? So again, you know, we've got that kind of almost the petals um, on the inside now created where you can put some stamping because um, the the kind of the moths are overlapping and creating that central aperture and different again to the kind of the almost traditional looking um, uh, mandala we created with that swirly flower and then the original one where we just went with a single color repeat stamp right let me turn these into some very quick cards and I will show you them uh, before we end the video Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me uh, work with the Periwink Stamper Ring and with our Beauty's Garden stamp set. And these are the three cards that I've finished from the, uh, the the card fronts that we were stamping during this video. And I think they're, they're you know three very different designs, given it's just the same stamp set um, and the same general principle. So this was the first one that we stamped out, that kind of the, the mandala, um, just in the teal 
And all I've added to the front there is um, some die cut flowers from our Doodle Blooms die set uh, and also um, one of the die cut words from uh, our Funky Words dies. So lovely dimension on that. There's some great, um, there's some, I think there's some pearly when it's gold shimmer on that flower as well. So it catches the light beautifully. Um, I'll put links to all the products that I've used in this video uh, in the description box below if there's anything that catches your eye. Uh, this was the second uh, design that we stamped out with the two different colours and I've simply um, die cut and stamped a, a sentiment on the uh, the kind of the, the circle in the centre, raised that up for a bit of dimension and added some of our clear and classy enamel dots just to give the card a little bit of a special finishing touch. So I think that has kind of a much more kind of traditional um, elegant style to it. And then third uh, we had our rainbow of moss card and all I've done for that I didn't think it needed anything really to finish it off other than the sentiment from Beauty's Garden in the centre and matted it onto black card. So very um, simple, clean and simple designs, um, bright colours and perfectly placed stamping. I think uh, you'd have a lot of fun putting cards like this together. So thank you very much for watching. Again, um, please do subscribe to the channel. I've got lots more videos coming your way. And if you could give this video a like and share it as well, that would be absolutely fantastic. And I'll see you again soon.